What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over converting our stun times and hit stop times to frames instead of seconds. Now this is the last thing that I said we would need to change, so I figured let's get it out of the way. So we had our uh, stun times, so hit stun, block stun, and hit stop, block stop times being implemented in using timers with seconds. We now want to actually use frames for these things because, you know, that's the standard and it also gives us a little bit more control over what we can do. For example, before with our two timers, our stun times were actually still going on when hit stop was occurring. Now, you couldn't see it because the animation stopped, the character stopped ticking. However, the timer manager lives outside of the actor. So it was actually still going on while the hit stop was occurring, which isn't what we want. Converting it to this frame system will make it work a lot more um, how it's intended to be. So you'll notice a few things. Um, not my breakpoint, my apologies. <laughs> You'll notice a few things here. So right now, um, the animation for the stun time is literally so short that it will not play. And just to prove to you that this is what's going on, I will uh, take out my hit reaction state just so you can see this. Here we go. So we changed our stun times. Now our hit reaction animations are, are very, very long. So you can see it does still go into the animation in the proper state, but we are going to need new animations that work with these faster, you know, only a few frames values. Because right now, like if I reconnect this, you saw how it was just completely skipping it. It looked like it wasn't going into the hit reaction, but actually it is. It has some blend time, so it goes out almost instantly. If we look at our hit reaction states, this one in particular has 1,500 frames. 1,500. When we only want like 8, you know, 16, probably even less than that, to be honest. But so we need to trim down these animations. Now, that's for a different episode. I will actually be going over trimming animations. But if you have animations that already are very, very quick and only a few frames then this will work without any sort of issue okay and with that out of the way we can go ahead and get started so go back to the top of my code here and okay so to get started if you have not watched any episode of the series i believe we're on episode 86 we're pretty far along there's still plenty to do but we're really starting to get into more of the good stuff and, and the stuff that i enjoy a lot more and so if you want to catch up, I'll leave a link to the entire playlist right here. You can see everything we've done to get up to this point. Otherwise, you probably will want to watch the way we handled our frames and inputs on frames with our input window system. So I will link that video right here in this icon in the top right corner. All right, now let's get started. So first things first, we need to stop thinking about time as seconds and we need to start thinking of it as frames. So we have a bunch of functions in here, but only two of them uh, use timers that need to be adjusted currently. So we have begin hit stop calls a timer that will trigger end hit stop. And we have begin stun that calls a timer that triggers end stun. You can see they are both commented out. Since uh, when I do these big change episodes where we change a lot of logic we already had, I'm going to try and make it easier for you guys. I know it can be confusing since I don't record uh, while I'm making the changes. So I'm going to make it easier and start commenting out the things that were there and then showing you how it looks now. Okay. So before we even get into these functions, just see these are the two timers I'm talking about. All right. So you can see kind of some of the changes, how we're not using timers anymore, but none of this will really help you. It'll be very confusing if you don't understand what's going on. So let's start bigger picture and we'll go into these functions. Let's go to tick. Tick is really uh, where we're gonna be doing, it's very small logic today. We're doing this amount of logic here in the character, and then we're doing a little bit of logic in the game mode tick as well, but this makes all the difference. So this is our tick function under our input window stuff. And I've added this. Now, 
The way we were working before is the character would take damage by colliding with a hitbox. And the hitbox has a hit stun time or a block stun time variable that is attached to it. And once we collide with that hitbox, we grab that data, we set that to the stun time, and then we perform an animation for that duration. And that does work. Um, it's completely functional and it has no issues, but we need to make it work off of frames instead because that's how this is commonly done. And also we can't always directly convert seconds to frames, you know, depending on if the, you know, even if you lose like one frame in 60 FPS, say you run at 59 for one second, then it's going to make a, it could make a big difference. It could actually make a difference. So we want to do this based off frames, not seconds. So the way this is going to work is I'm checking if our stun time is greater than zero. Minus minus stun time, which decreases, uh, subtracts one from it every single time. And then if stun time is less than or equal to zero, we call end stun. So think about this. This means every time tick goes off, every tick is one frame. So every frame we subtract one value from our stun time, which remember was previously seconds. We will be making it into an integer in today's episode. And if that integer is equal to, is less than or equal to zero after the subtraction, see this is important to note, we don't wanna just call end stun any random time. It has to be greater than zero initially so that we know the character is stunned. You could also check if the character state is stunned or, or one of your stun states here if you'd like. Then after we remove one of the values, is it less than or equal to zero? And if it is, we wanna call end stun then. This is especially useful because of the hit stop stuff I mentioned earlier. This only happens when the actor is ticking. If we set the custom actor's time dilation to be zero, then the actor does not tick, which means during hit stop, none of this stuff with the inputs, none of the stuff, the stun is affected. You have the same number of frames, which is intended here. Okay. So this is all the logic I'm doing in the, the character's tick. It's very simple, but it makes all the difference. Now, we can go back to our functions and start talking about what we have to change. So first of all, stun time you may have realized is actually, if I stop this, stun time is actually an integer now. Let's go into our footer template character.h. Let's scroll down. Specifically, let's look at our take damage function. You'll see that some things have changed. So first of all, um, this is the exact same function that we've had throughout the series, but I've changed it from float hit stun time, float block stun time, to int hit stun frames and int block stun frames. So um, I think frames in up above was an int 64, so you can keep a, an int 64 if you'd like. Either way, as long as it's an integer of some type, you'll be good to go. But we have int hit stun frames and int block stun frames. Okay, that's one minor change. Another change. If we scroll down to where our handles are, stun timer handle and hit stop timer handle. We don't really need these timer handles anymore. I will never be switching back to seconds. We will always use frames. Now, for the record, there are some fighting games that use hit stop times as seconds as opposed to frames, and stun times as seconds as opposed to frames. There's entire fighting games that use seconds instead of frames. However, these are often indie games, and perhaps, you know, it could be what you want. It might not be what you want. So you can leave these in if you'd like them, um, but we, we no longer need them if you want to get rid of them. I try and get rid of things we don't need to stop confusion down the line when we have all these variables. So you can feel free to delete them. You can always look back at the other episodes if you want to re-add them or just ask me and I'll tell you how it works. So you can get rid of that. And if we keep scrolling down, all right, and now I'm here. So now I scroll down to int stun time. Now, before this was a float and it said the amount of time the character will be stunned. However, I've changed it now, the amount of frames the character will be stunned. And I still called it stun time, but we should really change this now to num none frame stunned or something like that. Um, call it none, none stun frames. <laughs> so the amount of frames that you are stunned. And this is important because this can be updated on the fly. So if you get hit 
and then you get right into another combo. It can be overwritten and go to the next stun frame, different things like that. So we want to make sure that this accurately represents what we're trying to perform, but we no longer want a timer. We just want an integer to represent the number of frames that the character has left to be stunned. All right, so I'll go through all the growing pains of changing this variable with you because uh, some people have, have asked me, like, how do I find all the issues that pop up when I change a variable? And I know I do it quite frequently, so I apologize. But what I normally do is I change the variable, and I know it's not going to build properly right after changing it. But I can go to my error list down here and click on each error, double click on it, and I can change them and, and fix the errors one at a time. So none, num stun frames, instead of equaling, equaling 0, 0.0f for zero for a float, we're just gonna set it to zero, zero frames. Another thing we can also do is directly search for stun time and look that way, or directly search for and replace it right here num stun frames be careful see how i have multiple results that are coming up even though it's not the thing i want to change you can click this box right here to make sure it matches the entire word so it won't replace things that are already in other words or character strings and you can also match the case and then when we replace this this should replace all the variables we care about you can do it current document it's the only one we should need but I will go through real quick and just show you. So there's at least two in take damage. See, if you click through, it'll show you in order. There's one for block stun and take damage. Another one. Begin stun. This is the one in tick. Tick and tick. So now I'm going to replace all. Hit this button right here. And it says it's going to replace all these occurrences. And you can see that it has num stun frames. And now if I build, you can do build, build solution, or press F7. And now it should succeed. And so it's very easy to change a variable name. I know it's a little bit confusing when you don't see me doing it on the spot. That's why I wanted to show you, so I apologize for that. But there you go. Now our variable's changed, and we also have our num stun frames is set to zero, which is an integer, as opposed to a float amount, which is very important. So now, this is what my tick looks like, and you saw what my constructor looks like. The only other things we actually have to go through are begin stun, begin hit stop, end stun, and end hit stop. Which, now we've changed our variables, and it should make sense kind of what they're doing. So I think it'll make sense on why we're making this change. I'm also going to clear out this old function that I had. At least all the logic in it, because this, this comment block is huge. <laughs> and probably very confusing. This is the old check input buffer for command logic. We can get rid of the entire function later, but I, I've been scrolling through it every time. I'm like, you guys probably don't need to see that anymore since we're using the new system now. I was trying to keep it available for those who wanted to use it, but I'm sure you guys have it and you don't have to remove it from yours. I just want to show you and make a note on that. All right, let's start up at, it doesn't matter if we start at hit stop or stun. It really doesn't. I'm going to start with the stun actually, because the stun is a uh, Really, it's a little bit easier. We have to do a little bit extra for the hit stop that you'll see in a second. So, these begin stun and end stun functions. You already have these from previous episodes. The only thing that actually changes here, other than the names, is uh, we're not using this timer anymore. So we don't have to do anything with this to make this work. Uh, we're still setting the, the stun timer, or, or yeah, the number of stun frames now, what we were calling a stun timer. We're still setting it the same way. So we, if we just remove the timer, like this, our begin stun and end stun will work naturally, actually. So if you go to our take damage function, you can see num stun frames is equal to hit stun time. Hit stun time is, and I, I forgot to replace this, so that's on me. In take damage, Okay, and you can see I'm replacing these because I forgot to replace them, so that's my fault. But should be hit stun time, should become uh, hit stun frames, and block stun time should become block stun frames. But anyway, now you should see that the num stun frames is equal to the hit stun frames. And if the character is able to block the attack, the num stun frames is equal to block stun frames. 
And so with that in mind, the same exact logic that we're using for the stun still occurs. The rest of it doesn't really matter. We still check the, the height of the hitbox. We still call begin stun. We still call begin hit stop. It's all the same stuff. So literally, we didn't change anything with the, the begin stun and end stun logic other than removing that timer because we don't want the end stun function to be called when the timer completes, but rather when there are no more frames of stun time left. All right, now let's go over hit stop. So hit stop is also still called from take damage. We call begin hit stop and it's pretty similar. We had to make some changes because we have to change where we're calling end stun from. And if we left everything alone, it would it could potentially cause issues and, and lock your characters forever. So let's look at this. Um, and we'll we'll talk about everything. So here's the timer that we had that was calling the end hit stop function when this timer handle finished. Well, we don't need that anymore. So let's get rid of that. Now, let's look at these two functions. So begin hit stop. What it was is it was grabbing a hit stop time. And that time was just based off the damage amount. So the heavier attacks had a higher damage amount and a hit stop modifier. I was setting it to one because I didn't have a good value at the time. But this is just useful if you want to say, um, you know, like if the damage is within this range, then we multiply it by five. It, it can become this, uh, this type of hit stop, like light, medium, heavy hit stop. You can also do it. Uh, fully dynamically like we are here where it's just multiplying by this value regardless. So it's honestly pretty optional, but I am going to be using it. So for right now, our damage amount is still a float. We may switch it to an integer down the line, but a float works perfectly fine. I know some of you just prefer integer, which is why I bring it up. And so I just, it doesn't matter that this is a float and this hit stop modifier is a float. You can always make a float into an integer just know that the integer, the integer will truncate the decimal placement. And so if it truncates them, you won't have the full data. And that could cause some issues depending on uh, how precise you want it to be and if you want certain types of rounding and things like that. But if you don't care, like I don't, then um, I just want it to be consistent. So I can multiply two floats together and still get hit stop time. And we were already doing this, but I'm leaving this alone. Here's where things start to get different. Now, because of where we're doing our hit stop, and I'll show you in a second, we're going to be handling it in the game modes tick now. So the reason for this, I explained it earlier, is because if we are trying to do multiple tick operations at the same time, we don't want them to be done every tick. So for example, in hit stop, when time stops, we don't want to just continue pressing on with things in our game. At least we don't want to at the same rate. So, you know, if we set the custom time dilation to 0.1 or something, which some games do actually, where hit stop isn't entirely a stop, but actually like a, a slowdown, then yes, we do want it to tick, but it'll tick at a slower rate. Regardless, if we want it to tick at a slower rate or not tick at all, we can't possibly call and hit stop if we stop the actor's tick and then are trying to perform on tick the subtraction of our hit stop time so think so look at this custom time dilation what this really does is i don't know if it'll tell you and no, there's no comment on it but what this will what this really does here we go this custom time dilation for this actor's tick so this is, this is not a function we wrote, don't worry. This is the same function we were calling last time. This is the function in the actor.h code, the, I, the Unreal Engine code. This custom time dilation for this actor's tick. So this actor's tick gets set, it, it starts ticking at this multiplier. So if we're setting it to be zero, the actor's tick does not go off at all. So what would happen if we tried to do the same thing that we did for the, the number of stun frames right here? In the actor's tick well the tick would never occur and thus we would never be able to subtract our hit stop time and thus we would never be able to leave hit stop so we need to instead do this in the game modes tick okay and we'll get to this in a second so don't worry but we need to do this logic in the game modes tick so understand we've added a few additional things to make sure that 
this does not ever get us stuck in a state we can't get out. So first of all, we have our hit stop time that we had in the previous in all the previous episodes. We need to check if this is greater than zero now. We don't want to set the custom time dilation to zero or anything like that if it's not greater than zero, because if it's not greater than zero, we don't have to perform any hit stop. We're only going to do that logic and tick in the game mode if there is hit stop to perform. Okay. Now this was also already here because this is how I was stopping the timer where I was saying game mode is timer active is false. But this is basically just casting to the game mode to make sure this game mode exists and getting a reference to it. I set both the custom time dilation for this character and the other character to 0, 0.0f. And then I set game mode number of hit stop frames to the, our hit stop time. Now hit stop time is actually a float here. So this this will this will be subject to change. We will probably want to, as I said, kind of separate these into light, medium, heavy, or something like that. I'm not getting into all that today because that's an entirely different design thing, and we could take it a bunch of different directions. But what we do need to do is we do need to set the number of hit stop frames that the game mode needs to loop through in here. Okay, because before we were just using this hit stop time that got calculated, and it's fine if we do that. But our hit stop is being handled on the individual characters. Okay, we're calling it in the game mode. Sure, we're calling the end hit stop. But the begin hit stop right here, where we're actually setting the time dilation, is happening right in this function when they take damage. And because this is the case, the game mode needs to be aware of how many frames we have to perform this for. So let's take a step over to our fighter template game mode.h for whatever game mode you're using and intend this to be. And you can see I don't have a lot in here. We had our cheats. We had round one, which I actually don't even use. I set it up and we never used it, which is fun, you know, pretty funny. But um, we probably will use it in the future, so I'm not going to get rid of that one. And then we have some variables that are could be used depending on what we need. I've added another variable called num hit stop frames. The reason I think this is okay to go in the game mode is because each actor is typically going to be stopped for the same number of frames. The only reason that I even have this as a function in the character is just because if we do want to apply a certain effect to a specific character during hit stop, say you want to highlight the character that's being that's taking damage or have them play like again, uh, sometimes the uh, the attacked character will have a little bit of movement in their hit stop, different things like this. We can separate the logic depending on who took damage and who is actually receiving the hit stop. So even though they're the same right now, they could be different. However, the number of hit stop frames is going to be the same for both characters. They're not different. One character doesn't get control of their character back before the other. Or one player, I should say, doesn't get control of a character back before the other. And so, make this variable num hit stop frames. Quick note: this is all in public. This is important because if you make this variable and it's not in the public section here, then you won't be able to access it um, right here. Not the way we are accessing it. There's plenty of other ways to do it, but for now, we're keeping it simple, and you won't be able to access it if you don't have it in the right space there okay and now this gets set to this hit stop time so this is good we're setting this and we're still going to set the timer being active to false while hit stop is occurring notice that we don't call end hit stop anymore from this function in fact we don't call it from the character at all anymore it only gets called from the game mode so if we go back into our game mode we do everything in our tick function here we did not have a fighter template game mode tick now with the introduction of, a, of an important function like tick or some sort of overridden function in the code, it's going to override the blueprint functionality we have. Now we can easily remedy this by changing our inheritance chain or by just making a function and calling it every time. So this is important because um, adding tick, which here's how I've added tick, this is how I've overridden it because the Unreal Engine's game mode class does have a tick function okay and so i've also made this bp tick for blueprint tick 
that's a custom function. And I made a blueprint implementable event because I'm going to, and I'm not going to fill out the logic here. I'm just going to replace the tick that we have in the blueprint with this function and call this every code tick. It's a good way to get around issues where you have multiple functions in a code file or in a blueprint file that overlap and one is overriding the other. It's actually how we did the keyboard mode setup. Remember we did like P2 keyboard right move right or whatever. I did those because it otherwise it would be overridden by the code class or the blueprint class depending on the order you have it set up in and we wouldn't be able to do all the logic we wanted. So by adding this, it's very simple. We can just verify that we can call both the code logic and the blueprint logic. Okay. So then write out tick right here and make your new function and then call your blueprint tick function and just pass in the delta time that comes from tick. So this will basically allow us to use the function we were already using in the blueprint, but now we can add this extra logic that we need for the hit stop. So this is going to look very familiar because this is exactly the same as we were handling the end stun in the characters tick, except we're doing this in the game mode, so we have to access the characters slightly differently. So we're checking if num hit stop frames. Remember, we are setting this in begin hit stop. Num hit stop frames. We're checking if that's greater than zero, because if it's not greater than zero, or if it's it, yeah, if it's not greater than zero, period, we are going to we're not going to perform this logic. No reason wasting. Uh, time doing this when it won't benefit us at all. We're going to subtract from it. If it then is less than or equal to zero, we know that we can end the hit stop. We have to end both players hit stop at the same time, but we do have to make sure that player one and player two are valid. If they're not valid, you'll cause a crash trying to call, uh, trying to call this function. So, if player one just basically means if it's not equal to null pointer, if it's valid, whatever you want to call it. But if player one, player one end hit stop. If player two, player two end hit stop. Now, you might be uh, noticing you can't actually call these functions. If that's the case, it's another case of being in the right space. So you can see I put begin hit stop and end hit stop. We don't technically need begin hit stop there, but since I was putting end hit stop here, I just moved begin hit stop with it. I put it in public. That way we can just call the function from a reference, even if it's not in the inheritance chain. Okay, so make sure you put the little public keyword. You can put protected again if you'd like. So we started off in protected here. And so in protected, we wouldn't be able to call and hit stop. So I make it public and I make it protected again. It's this easy. You can uh, use these as much as you want or as little as you want. But if you can't see the function at all, it's most likely an issue with that. We'll get more into these as we get into cleaning up the code and making it a little bit more uh, friendly for the template, which I am going to do. So while I'm still figuring everything out, I'm kind of making everything be um, as open as possible. So I, I just wanted to show you that. All right. And now once you're able to call and hit stop, you're done with the tick function in the game mode. And basically, this will keep ticking regardless if the actor's dilation is zero or not. So then once you are done with your hit stop frames, the number of frames that have to pass before your hit stop is complete, then both characters will go back to normal. And those are all the code changes between the character classes and the game mode. So that's not bad. I'm also going to change these things on the act, the hitbox actor. So if you go to hitboxactor.h, you can see I have a hit stun frames now instead of hit stun time and block stun frames instead of block stun time. So I've changed this everywhere. Okay. So I made them integers. I changed the name and I changed the comment as well. Once you change these, make sure you change their values in the constructor. Instead of 0.0f for floats, I just make them 0 and 0. And at this point, we are good. We shouldn't need anything else here in the code today. If you did any other logic with stun times or hit stop, you may have to adjust it to work with this new logic, but 
hopefully at this point you should understand what to do. Now we're going to load up Unreal again, and we're going to have to adjust a few things in the create active hitbox and create projectile hitbox. But otherwise, uh, we're pretty much good to go. Let's go into, let me uh, see if I can minimize this for you. Let's go into our animation blueprint. And we're going to have compilers as well. I am as well because of the stun time. I told you I'd show you the growing pains. So you can see I changed stun time to num stun frames. Now, you can technically do a replace on a lot of these. But I have a hard time with it. Um, it doesn't always work for me the way I want. So I'm just going to go through. And this is how I do blueprint changes. I just go through and I, I click on the errors one by one. And then I go to what I want to go to. <laughs> I usually I go from top to bottom. That's typically the, the method that people use. And we can do this. Technically changing the number of stun frames into a play rate basis doesn't exactly work. Really these, these are supposed to be times. So to make our animations work based off this time, is it's not going to be a one-to-one -one like it is here. Which we're going to have to adjust that. However, for now, we can do this just to get rid of our errors and so you can let the animations play. As I said, we have to change our animations anyway because mine, at least, are way too long. If yours are the right length, then excellent. It'll save you some work. But mine are not the right length, and they're way too long. So I'm going to be going through and changing these anyway. But the important thing, and something I like to do, is just to make sure that my stuff compiles. And that's not to say that it's important that it um, it, that it's not important that it works because it is important, of course, that it works. However, there are so many things in game development. Um, you, you can only do so much at one time, right? So we don't want to sit here and try and figure out all the stuff for the stun time. Uh, working so frames being converted to the proper play rate in here. We'll get to that in a separate episode. But you can see... This is literally all it takes. I know some sometimes it's a little scary to change all this stuff for real because you're like, I don't know if it'll work. And trust me, I, I still get that. Like, I don't necessarily want to change the system. I don't know if I can get it to go back to the way it was. But you can, I promise. We got it there in the first place, and we can get it back. So you can, you know, I'm kind of just doing this to show you, again, that I'm, I'm changing all this. So this is... You can expect to have to do this because I don't want anyone to be nervous about that. Again, I've gotten some comments and I realized I did not explain it very well for what I have to do when I change these variables. So if you really want to, uh, you can go through. If you've been following the series directly, you can go through and look at all the states that are right here. Go to those states and change this. Or you can just go through your error list like this. Going through your error list is really the proper way to do it because uh, it shows that you know how to debug pretty well and how to solve errors. And now, once you get all this stuff in, your character should be moving again and your errors will be gone. So I've changed stun time to none stun, numb stun frames everywhere that I need to do that. Now, we don't really have any sort of changes today with um, any of the states. We only have some things in the event graph and some of our functions that we have to change. So we changed our hit stun time and block stun time to frames. And so in our create active hitbox, in all of our functions where we had hit stun time, block stun time, we need to change that as well. So change these two integers instead of floats and change their names to frames. I have eight frames, 12 frames. Okay. Of course, when you go into this function now, uh, these will no longer line up. It will have like this dark green line and then connect to this light green line. And it will actually kind of let you do it, but then it will throw a warning or an error. What you can do is refresh the node, right click and refresh. Or you can just delete it like I do. And then, you know, instead of hit stun time, you look hit, hit stun frames. Whoops. Not get. Set hit stun frames. And then you just relink it back up. It is a minor inconvenience, but... It is very well worth it in the long run. There you go. Something like that. Do that for hit stun and block stun. Also important, if these may have gotten disconnected, 
these two green lines. I know it gets a little bit messy here. I apologize. Let's see if I can extend that out so you can see. These two may have gotten disconnected because you changed the type. I've had that happen in the past. It hasn't happened to me recently, so I don't know if it's a version thing or what. But if they have, just make sure that these two are connected to the reroute node still. Or at least that they're just connected in one way or another to the proper area. All right. Now, the good thing with the hit stun block stun time is that not all of our functions have it. In fact, I don't believe our... Yeah, our throw hitbox doesn't have it, and our proximity hitbox also does not have it. So you don't have to worry about doing it for them. The projectile hitbox does have a hit stun time and block stun time. So you'll want to change those again from floats to integers, change their names perhaps to hit stun frames, block stun frames, and do the exact same thing we just did. Make sure they're still connected, bring them over, and set hit stun frames, block stun frames off the hitbox as opposed to hit stun time, block stun time. Okay. All right. And now all your your things may be reset depending on if you refreshed or just made a new node. So your hit stun frames, block stun frames, before you might have had like four seconds, two seconds, whatever. If you had that in before, then uh, make sure you change these to frames now. It's pretty quick to do. I mean, I changed the ones that I thought were necessary. Um, you can leave them at zero now. Since we're not using timers, it won't cause an issue even with a... Uh, without a check. So you can have zero hits, then zero blocks, then if you want, specifically useful for uh, special moves. But you can see I've changed them to all different types of values. Two, four, eight, if they have a few that are 16, uh, make sure you change your the ones in here as well. See, my projectiles don't actually really have them. I'll just add a few, just to be, you know, keeping everything how it should be. Something like that. For me, the values aren't so important right now. I'm just making sure the system works. You will want to, we are gonna put this in a data table, so you will want to uh, link everything up and make sure things feel good, of course, while you're using your attacks, but that's more of a game design thing. Once it gets working, all those sort of tweaks are gonna take time. And there you go. Now, if you have any errors when you try and compile, just go and right click and refresh the nodes. You'll usually have like two extra nodes here. It'll be the things that you changed. It'll still be trying to link to the old float uh, variables that you had. If you refresh, it should get rid of it. Worst case scenario, just call the function again and just put it here. And yes, you have to replace the values, which is annoying, but it will definitely fix the issue. Okay. And last but not least, we need to solve a few problems in our hitbox actor now. And you can pretty much imagine what they are. But we use these uh, hit stun times and block stun times in the take damage function. In the take damage function, we now change them to be integers instead of floats. And so because of that, we need to make sure that we're using our proper new variables as opposed to the old ones that we had and don't exist anymore. So specifically, all the places we use take damage, and what I'm going to do is just do a um, find references here. So we have the check collision function in the hitbox actor BP, and we have the on component begin overlap of the hitbox display for the projectile. Okay, so the projectile itself has two take damage functions, and you can see I've replaced all of them with the frame amounts as opposed to the times. Okay, that's these two. And then in my check collision function, you can see I have player one check collision, player two check collision. And I'm calling take damage here. Hit stun, hit stun frames, block stun frames. And hit stun frames, block stun frames here. So I know I probably sound like a broken record by now, but there you go. That's all your logic that you need done and changed. And there you go. Now at this point, everything should compile nice and neat. All right, one last thing you're going to want to do in default game mode BP, where we had originally event tick, we want to switch that out for the new event that we had. So if we right click, we can look for event BP tick. And you can see I had event tick right below it. Switch out the delta time and connect the white line and event tick can go away. This will ensure that the code tick and the blueprint tick can both run at the same time. 
All right. And that's pretty much it for today's episode. There is one thing that I had to do personally because of the way my system is set up. So if you're following, you'll probably want to check this out. The hit stop modifier in the past episode was set to 1.0. So 1.0 was just basically because I didn't know how much I wanted to change the hit stop by, if at all. But now we're using frames. And remember where I was saying two floats will be, if you're multiplying floats, they will be truncated if you set it to be in an in integer. So in begin hit stop, where you're taking the damage amount and multiplying by the hit stop modifier. Well, in this case it's being set to a float but the game mode num hit stop frames is equaling that hit stop time so if the damage amount is only 0.1 and you multiply the hit stop modifier of one you'll have 0.1 which will round down in an integer which this num hit stop frames is so you will actually have zero frames and this won't occur at all so what i've done to remedy this before we get into anything more you know specifics with oh this is a light attack to do this many frames of hit stop all i've done is taken my hit stop modifier and right here and i've set it to be 100 now that's more than we probably need so in this case if it's a 0.1 damage attack then i am getting 10 frames of hit stop right around there um and you know, like I said, it's probably a little more than we need, but at least it shows off that it's working just so you can see it. Just didn't want anyone to forget that. And then you don't see any hit stop and think your stuff's not working. It's very possible you just don't have any hit stop frames because of the truncation there. If you change that, that should fix the issue. But anyway, guys, that's all I got for you. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. Does more for me in the community than anything else you can do. And I just really appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for continuing to support me and enjoying the series. I'm having so much fun with this and I'm glad we're doing better and better as time goes on. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community where we'll be willing and happy to help you for free. And that's all I got for you. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, my friends.